Hello everybody, Hassan here, engineer, MBA, and investor. And in today's video, I want to talk about Beam Therapeutics' latest quarter earnings. I want to talk about this presentation just today. I also, I also want to talk about a potential move being done by RG, RK Invest, when it comes to Caribou Biosciences. We believe there's something that they are doing to sort of suppress the potential and the reputation about this company, about Garibu Biosciences company. I want to talk all about that in this video. So Beam Therapeutics, this was announced literally today, 10 August at 6.30 a.m. Eastern. And they basically provided their business and pipeline updates and the second quarter uh, updates for 2021. Obviously, Beam Therapeutics, we've covered some of it in this channel, not as much as Antelia and CRISPR Therapeutics, for example, but we have covered this company in the past. And obviously, Beam Therapeutics is sort of really, really uh, positioned in a way to be a platform company rather than a specific tech company that specializes in the, in the specific technology, right? What they believe is... Uh, they offer set of technologies that can be licensed and partnered up with many, many other companies. We've seen it with Verve Therapeutics uh, partnering up with Beam Therapeutics. Obviously, Verve Therapeutics is at this point a billion dollars company. So it is a very significant partnership. So we see those types of partnership, Beam Therapeutics, especially shareholders of Beam a lot of people uh, are really, really betting on the fact that this company can be like a platform company, sort of like how Moderna is, right? I don't know if you guys caught my last video on Moderna and Ginkgo uh, Bioworks, you know, sort of positioning themselves being a platform company. I think that's a really nice narrative. I think it's a nice uh, position to be in, to be a platform company, to license your technologies. But my argument to that is that, you know, other companies like Caribou Biosciences should be seen as a platform company, right? But that's just my thoughts. So latest updates here, nothing really groundbreaking other than the fact that they are on track. The company is on track to submit their first IND for Beam 101 in the second half of 2021. So we are in the second half in 2021. Could be within a few weeks. We never know. Uh, there's a continued progress across the base editing portfolio, including initiation of IND enabling studies for Beam 201. All right, so quite interesting that they uh, are on track. And the CEO, John Evans, which I'm a big fan of, he said that we have made many, meaningful progress in advancing our base editing programs in the first half of the year. And more importantly, remain on track to submit our first investigational new drug IND for Beam 101 in the second half of this year. With the initiation of IND enabling studies for Beam 201, we are now bringing the versatility and precision of base editing to a second therapeutic area targeting the high unmet need of T-cell car cancers with the first quad editing cell therapy. We've also completed continue to expand our innovation collaborator network more recently with a partnership with Apelis to apply base editing to a more biologically complex disease area of complement pathway. With a strong balance sheet, we are well positioned to advance our robust pipeline in novel base editing to tackle serious diseases. So on track, everything is looking good for Beam Therapeutics. For all shareholders, this is good news. Things are looking good. I mean, they have milestones. They have a head uh, schedule milestones to uh, hit, but I think as a shareholder, the first thing you should be focusing on is their BMO 101 program for IND enabling when they do file for IND, when they get the IND papers accepted. I think that is extremely, extremely important. Uh, obviously, their partnerships with what they've done with other companies such as Verve Therapeutics, I think it's amazing. I think this is something you want to keep your eye on. But ultimately, this company is also being valued for their programs, their pipeline. So keep that in mind. I mean, considering there's other newer companies that have already gone through, are going through phase one as we speak with human uh, data. Uh, it's really interesting to see this company uh, taking their time, essentially. But, you know, ultimately, they're focusing on quality. They're focusing on uh, getting things right done the first time. I think that's ex extremely interesting to see and the fact that the the ceo is quite bullish on it to me shows uh, confidence shows validity and i think what they've announced in june 2021 their uh, partnership with apelles 
uh, their five years exclusive research collaboration. I mean, this is extremely uh, necessary. It is extremely good to see these types of partnership. But the fact that Beam's proprietary based adding technology is being used now by this uh, this entity, Apelis um, Pharmaceuticals, to me, this is quite interesting. This is quite good. I mean, the numbers are one thing, but 50-50 U.S. co-development and co-commercialization, that's what you want to see as a platform company. So I really love what I'm seeing here from the Therapeutics here so far. So my last point here is their cash position grew from $650 million as of June 30 to almost 300 as of December 2021. So they doubled their cash position less than six months after their last time they reported it. Obviously, this was done through raising funds, public funds, market funds, through the recent spike we've had. I think in June, they, they announced they were uh, raising funds through the public market. So quite interesting diluting shares. It is what it is. That's the perfect time to do so when you're an R&D expense type of company. You want to raise cash. You want to have the green light. And we've seen it. Antelia done it. We've seen CRISPR Therapeutics done in the path. And Beam Therapeutics are, have also done it. So quite interesting to see it. I'm totally supportive of that type of moon. You want the green light. You don't want to be sh in, in shackles when it comes to uh, revenues, you know, you don't want to be bankrupt. So this is great stuff from this company, Beam Therapeutics. I know a lot of our viewers are big, big supporters of Beam Therapeutics. So I'll do my best to cover this company as we go forward. And again, just a reminder uh, for people that don't know, Beam Therapeutics, you know, they have proprietary technology. They have patents over the whole base editing technology. It's really specific technology that improves efficiency, reduces off targets and ultimately reduces risk from that the first generation of CRISPR Cas9 with which is basically scissors and cutting DNA uh, nucleotides that this type of technology prevents right it's base editing right we covered that in a previous video early on in our channel channel we sort of compared the technology so if you're curious go watch that video so obviously you know base editing is a new class of precision genetic medicine so they're really bullish on it you know obviously many other companies are as well that's why you're seeing these partnerships so beam therapeutics is doing something really good uh, a lot of shareholders are very supportive of it to me i think there's a lot of potential with beam therapeutics there's a lot of upsides but i ultimately i want to see the ind filings i want to see things go forward i want to see them tackle their own programs in their pipeline give some additional updates get some phase one human data i want to see all that this is what i uh, I want as an investor, but you know that's my view of things. So I want to shift this uh, this video now to Caribou Biosciences. I know I've been talking a lot about Caribou Biosciences, but to me the story has just been amazing, right? The how way the stock has propelled since its IPO. It had a slight drop for a few days, but in the past week it has just skyrocketed. Look at this, guys! Today up ten percent again. Look at this past five days. You know, up 67% since its IPO, or at least around there, we're looking at almost 80%, right? So this is less than two weeks, guys. This is what I mean, you know, you do your own research, you build conviction, and you ultimately support companies that you believe can make ground, breaking changes in the future, can change the, the, the way we look at human genome, the genome editing, you know, it's not just human, human therapeutics, but also animals, livestock, you know, vegetation, plants. All of that, guys, it's extremely, extremely important. Agriculture, we saw how Rachel Harwitz, the CEO of this company, is really bullish on agriculture. She recognizes that there is a need for more than just human therapeutics. And I think Yaribu Biosciences are a big, big player of this. So keep your eyes on this. Again, the stock has been breaking records while other companies in this space have been sort of in the negative. Kaibu Biosciences have kept going up and up. There's a lot of traction in investors. I'm hearing a lot of feedback from our viewers in this channel. Again, I've been hearing good feedback. In fact, I've been hearing people t uh, thanking me for you know promoting this company, for talking about this company when no one was on YouTube before the company hit IPO. So again, guys, this is the mission of this channel. We want to raise awareness, raise information for you guys for free, increase knowledge, ultimately allow you guys to make your own conviction, build your own conviction and make your own decisions. Again, our mission here is for you to have wealthier lives for yourself, for your family, for your friends. And you know, Ultimately, you have to pull the trigger on your own. It's your decision. It's your research. It is your hard-earned money. So, guys, 
no problem for the work on this, but the work is still not done. We have a lot more to cover. Caribou Biosciences and other companies like CRISPR Therapies, Antilia Bean Therapy, they're so in the early stages. There's so much runaway upside to be had. So wanted to cover that. And another thing I wanted to cover here is ARK Invest. Obviously, I get these weekly uh, newspapers uh, from ARK Invest. And basically, they cover, they usually cover stocks that gone, you know, 10, 20, 30% up in a particular time frame. And what I want to talk about is how Caribou Biosciences was mentioned here while Beam Therapeutics, Robinhood, Editas were all mentioned. And look at this, guys. Caribou Biosciences bas- barely had one week on them. Uh, one sentence, right? Look at this. It's straight up there for, for reasons described above under Beam and Editas. Look at how much Editas got, you know. Editas got some information, some comparison with Moderna. Edit, uh, sorry, that was Beam Therapeutics. Editas got some, uh, again, some information on Moderna. Um, so maybe, actually, maybe that doesn't mean that much. But what I'm curious to see, you know, these companies like Zymergen, look at this. They were getting two paragraphs and all of that. Is it possible that ARCG and ARC Invest are sort of downplaying on Caribou Biosciences? Because we know ARCG fund they bought. Caribou Biosciences, the only time they bought this company was pre-IPO, the secondary shares at $17.50 a piece. The company, Caribou Biosciences, for the following week went down all the way to $15 a share, but RG never bought any. They never added any shares and they have not added as where we made this video. So is it possible that the run up here we're looking at, you know, ARK and G, ARK and Vass are looking at this and they're like, wow, this is a crazy run up. We completely missed the boat on this. We bought secondary shares, but we could have bought a lot more. It's holding one of our less weight in our RG fund. Is it possible that they're sort of not really covering this company in hopes to buy it at a lower price? I'll leave you guys with that thought. You know, this is what I'm seeing so far. There's other companies in this fund that are being covered by RG. Why is Kagbu Biosciences not getting the lenses that other companies are getting in their own fund, in the same fund, in the genomic side of things? To me, I think there's something going on there. I'm curious to see what you guys think. Give me your input. Let me know what you think. Maybe I'm just thinking out of the box here. I'm completely in the fields here. But if you're having the same type of feeling, let me know in the comments below. I'm curious to see what you guys think. So again, just wanted to cover Bean Therapeutics uh, quarterly earnings report. Uh, they're on track. Everything's good with them. Just like every other genome editing company, things are looking good. We'll see how it goes with their first BM 101 IND filings. Caribou Biosciences having historical days, a lot of traction, a lot of views, a lot of re- people covering this company now. Things are looking good. And, you know, RG, maybe they're they're trying to downplay the stock. They're trying to avoid reputation. They're trying to avoid exposure to this stock to hopefully buy more to it. That's just speculation. Let me know what you guys think. Again, you never provide financial advice. Do your own research. So thank you very much for watching. We'll end this video like this. Like this video if you found value from it. Subscribe if you haven't. And we'll see each other tomorrow. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you.